Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today is July 16th, and Michael's out on assignment. But I'll tell you what, also want to give a shout out to J.D. Vance as uh, congratulations for being picked on the uh, vice president for the Trump team. So let's get started with some of these crazy energy stories going on around the world right now. Three major solar farms gets a green light in the east of England. Got some insights on this one. Talk to uh, Tammy Nemeth, the head of the Nemeth Report in the UK about this. UK offshore energies industry unveils blueprint for net zero power. Nuclear. The Senate recommends extending lifespan of power plants beyond 60 years and building more. You got to love this. The offshore wind industry energy scandal is even worse than you think. Buckle up. Our buddy Robert Bryce steps up and hits it out of the park on this story. Countering Europe's backlash to the green transition. Uh, I really enjoyed this one from Patrick Schroeder, a senior fellow at the Environmental Society Center at the Chatham House. You got to love a good story there. So let's get started. Three major solar farms and green light in East England. I did not know this. There are three kinds. These are the kinds of clean leadership that will increase investor confidence and show that Britain is serious about tackling climate emergency with the urgency that is needed. So says managing director of UK development of low carbon, Mike Rutgers. Here's where I'm going to have a kind of funny because that's what he says, but on the boots on the ground. And I trust Tammy Nemeth. Tammy was saying that there's not enough farmland. They're going to have food problems coming up around the corner. Depending on the decisions once built, we estimate that the 500 megawatt project will be a solar enough capacity of a hundred and 60,000 homes with clean, secure energy and play a cl- clean role. Unbelievable amount of energy and, and size that these things are just going to be taking up in the, the landscape. Very good article, but also take a note that solar panels don't do as good a job on the ecology because they are toxic. We ran a story a little while ago that the toxicity of solar panels is even worse than nuclear reactors. So anyway, very good story there. Let's roll around to UK offshore energy industry unveils blueprint for net zero power. By 2030, the UK will need to add 90 gigawatts of new capacity. This is on offshore. That's more than 90 million homes must be outsourced from renewables involving tripling of offshore capacity. The additional 15 gigawatts of low carbon dispatchable energy, which is not true on wind. The interconnect power transmission capacity needs to be extended from the current 10 gigawatts to 20 gigawatts by 2030. According to the report addressing planning challenges around coordinated efforts to reduce project lead times. Really? It will be a Herculean effort, says David Whitehouse. In the UK, they're already having huge energy costs. Deindustrialization is happening at an epic scale. Food is going to go through the roof, and this is going to be a blueprint of what not to do. So interesting article, want to give a hand, hand out for them. And it originally appeared, I believe, on Energy Live News. Let's roll in. The Senate recommends extending lifespan to power plants beyond 60 years. This, again, is another testimony to why I love nuclear energy. We can't have a baseload. AI is going to require a baseload of nuclear 
And the byline on this one is aligned with a nuclear recovery trajectory initiated by the government. The Senate says in favor of a report construction of 14 new EPR type two reactors. But the Commission of Inquiry also recommends extending the lifespan of reactors beyond 60 years while work is underway to enable them to operate up to 50 years. This is huge. I love this article. The Senate, I'm hoping that they actually come through, and this may be actually something that we have to give a Senate a shout-out for, and they may get this pulled together. Um, The one line out of here I thought was pretty good, we can't do a permanent stop and go. That's what's happening and killing France right now, is when you sit back and take a look at the revival of nuclear France was the poster child of carbon net zero before carbon net zero was cool. And then they went nuclear. They had their nuclear fleet of about 54, I believe, nuclear reactors, 54 nuclear reactors. They're running at about 25% capacity because of maintenance issues and not putting money back into that fleet. It would have been a lot cheaper to keep that fleet at capacity. So you Pretty good article on this one. I'm all in, and and, uh, I just, I love everything about good about nuclear. Let's go to the offshore wind energy scandal is even worse than you think. This is from Robert Bryce. Robert Bryce is a stud. His, go to Robert Bryce's Substack. Uh, it'll be in the show notes here. When you sit back and take a look at the, the charts and the information in this article, Robert hits it out of the park. Two of Europe's biggest energy companies are abandoning the SS offshore wind. In May, Shell, the UK, and oil and gas giant, 2023 revenue was $317 billion, announced that it was cutting staff from its offshore wind business because, according to Bloomberg, wait for it, the company has decided to focus on markets that deliver most value for their investors. Oil and gas. It's another reason why Michael and I have been talking that, you know, you take a look at Shell. Shell may be rolling to the United States and being listed on the U.S. uh, New York Stock Exchange. The moves by BP and Shell are only the latest examples. But let's go down here to some of the numbers. Um, Robert gave public lectures in Nantucket and Newport on the energy transition and offshore wind energy. Those events were great. They were two small groups, 4CK, Four Whales, and Green Ocean sponsored the lectures. And there are some charts in here that are phenomenal. How much wind capacity versus what nationality and who is doing the work. This is offshore companies that are taking the porculus bill, as Dan Bongino calls the Inflation Reduction Act, and then taking that profit and that money and going overseas. So he does a great job with it. According to data from Good Jobs, collected more than $9 billion in state and federal subsidies, loan guarantees, where they're eager for more. However, lucrative offshore wind subsidies considered vineyard, the 800 megawatt offshore project owned by Avangard, the Spanish company, and Copenhagen Infrastructure Partners. Construction costs on the project will be about $4 billion with an investment tax credit of about 40%. Those two foreign outfits would collect as much as $1.6 billion in federal tax credits on wind vineyard alone. Holy smokes, follow the tax scam. I, I'm just trying to sit here and go, this is just nuts. The the charts in this article are unbelievable. What are federal scientists saying about onshore wind, offshore winds likely impact on North Atlantic right whales? Increased noise from wind turbine construction and operations and vessels could also directly important whale behaviors and interfere with the direct detection of critical attacks. Acoustic cues. These types of impacts may be also associated with psychological stress and could affect the whale's use of the region. They're dying and we are losing whales. And it's approved by the Biden administration. Again, 
Robert, you are a hero in my mind. There are charts and graphs and follow and subscribe and support Robert Stack on his Substack. Last article for today, countering Europe's backlash to the green transition. What you're seeing here is the hypocrisy that is being devoted in a energy transition because a transition can only happen if it is truly a transition. I don't see an energy transition happening anytime soon because we're going to need nuclear and natural gas for as long as I can see. Um, the, the technology will be there. We may not need it after a while, but in the next 50 years, we're going to need a lot of nuclear and natural gas in order to get there. A sustainable future is still possible even amidst a radically altered political climate. You're going to see more and more political climate changing. People are tired of being told how to live, how to be taxed, taxed and taxed and taxed again. Tapping into the widespread sense of economic insecurity, both right wing and centrist parties adopted this narrative and sparked political politicized debates. The frames on the frames that pro green and pro conservative policies are opposing forces. This is going to continue and just escalate going all the way through. Um, this is a very lengthy article. The link between environmental regulations and industrial policy needs to be strengthened. When you sit back and take a look at the industrialization that's going on in all economies that go heavily into wind and solar negatively impact the negative to the converse. So the more money we spend on wind and solar, the more the deindustrialization happens and the more coal burning goes on. It is just mind boggling how this whole relationship is building out that it is more harmful to force a transition rather than to have a good plan. So with that, like, subscribe, share, and let's set aside all the political rhetoric. But I do want to say something right now. I'm wearing my Trump hat around outside everywhere. And if any Antifa members or anybody else is coming up and telling me anything else, I'll tell you where I vote, how I vote, and I'll defend my family. Hey, with that, have a great day and enjoy your family. Thanks. Talk to everybody soon.